The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, Wan Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2014. This is theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. We've got a great, exciting uh, two guests from Cisco Systems here at the Big Data event. Great to see you guys here at Cisco. Uh, Todd Brand, and Director of Product Marketing for Unified Computing, and Raghu Nambiar, Distinguished Engineer of Data Center Business Unit. Guys, um, great to see Cisco here. Um, Thank you. IBM, Cisco, the big whales are seeing big data as a big opportunity. You guys obviously one of those big whales. Cisco, great business. Um, so the big data is a big part of the, the, the business, but I want to first get to some news that came sure. out today. Um, number one, <laughs> Cisco is number one this quarter in server shipments, Blade Server x86 shipments in North America. So is that true? So it's IDC just released their tracker data, right, last week and Cisco is on top in the Americas for x86 server revenue, vendor shares, uh, for x86 blades. Uh, if you drill down into the US, uh, number one there as well with 41% market share um, has, you know, where customers have placed us. So it's a really exciting time for us. Um, I think one of the other really eye-popping numbers in the, in the data this week, um, this is a two and a half billion dollar server business that just grew 40% uh, in the quarter year on year. Uh, so that right now is really unheard of. Uh, Cisco's you know, really leading the growth in the overall server market. So, you know, first of all, I'm a skeptic at the beginning of the server when it comes to server share. So I got to ask sure. the question. Obviously, everyone's looking at that saying, okay, let's look at the numbers, let's unpack the numbers. Yep. So it's Q1, Correct. calendar year, yep. North America. Correct. So, and um, IBM got out of the x86 business, so their customers are going sideways, going, hey, that part of it, HP has a server business. So you're eating share from, HP, IBM, and Dell. Correct, yep, consistently. I mean, this is our 17th consecutive quarter of share growth since we entered the business in, in March of 09. Um, so this is not, um, this is just kind of continuous ramp. I think early on, you know, there was a lot of skepticism, right? You of know, course. Cisco kind of crossing the aisle from the network buyer to the, to the server buyer. Um, and, and think about, you know, March <laughs> of 09, we're tailing right into the, the depth of the recession. A lot of people kind of wonder, is this the best time to go into a market adjacency? But it turned out it was perfect timing because at that moment, all of our customers were trying to figure out how to do this more efficiently and we brought them a platform that allowed them to get a lot more efficient the way they ran their computing. So, perfect timing got us off to a great start and then, you know, the word's out now that it's a better mousetrap um, and our customers talk about it in a way that's even better than we can, and it's, it's just you know, snowballing. Basically. So a lot of people were skeptical when you guys announced this because this was the whole John Chambers adjacency market strategy, right? Okay, sure. let's go get some market expansion because Cisco's growing, it's a mature company now, been around for, for a dec couple decades. Well, it was some of that, but I think it was also we saw an opportunity, right? There, there really hadn't been a lot of innovation in the way all the pieces of the data center were put together, and it was, you know, the, the industry had kind of laid it on customers to figure out how to bolt it all together into a platform that you could run an application on. And, and what we saw was an opportunity to bring all that together and really optimize for virtualization as the virtualization and, and private cloud, public cloud waves start to take off. So obviously big data kind of telegraphs a little bit about sure. like the software defined data center. So Todd, I got to ask you, what are the drivers on this? So like obviously, you know, UCS has a promise and uh, a Sorry. plan, uh, but the customer environments are still on-prem. I mean, I talked about cloud. Sure. I, you know, we talk about the cloud OpenStack, whether it's OpenStack, VMworld, all the different shows. It's very clear, hybrid cloud is certainly the way to go, but not on-premise data centers are not going away. Oh no, no. They're, so what's the, the landscape, the, and what's the drivers the, the, from the, the share growth? The server huggers are there and we love them, right? The I think, server huggers, so, uh, the bare know, metal huggers. So, I think the, 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 key, the, key, the key differentiator that I point out you know, as it relates here to what we're doing at Hadoop Summit is versatility, right? So the way we architected this system, it's fabric oriented, right? We're not really making the server the center of the uh, universe anymore, but it's more how everything's connected together. So if you need a rack or a blade, fine, we can do that all in one system. If you really want an app that scales up or scales out like we're talking about here this week, we can do that. Um, if you want to go optimize for a physical, you know, bare metal environment or virtual, right? If you want to do you know, DAS storage or out on the network, all of those different permutations of mm -hmm. operating models that are driven by the apps, we can accommodate that all you know, 
everyone can accommodate that, but they'd accommodate it by setting up different kind of little islands of infrastructure. We can do all that at the same time on one centrally managed platform, and it really plays into kind of the dynamic in the application space, and Greg, so, we can talk about yeah, that much yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, one question that you asked is like why UCS is winning, okay? The, the main reasons are, uh, the unique thing that uh, we are bringing on the table from the architecture side, the unified management, unified fabric, advanced management capabilities uh, across all the enterprise applications, okay? So if you look at uh, you know, your uh, enterprise IT ecosystem, I would classify the applications in three categories. The traditional data management tools, like uh, Oracle, SAP, and SQL Server, you know, running on uh, Blaze servers or Rackmon servers uh, connected to uh, uh, enterprise class uh, storage arrays. The second class is uh, the emerging uh, big data platform, like Hadoop and uh, NoSQL and other distributions. And third is the, the, the fast data uh, uh, platforms and real-time analytics. So what UCS is uh, bringing on the table is uh, a unified fabric-based architecture for all these three different type of applications. Yep. So on unification, some people get confused by this. I want to sure. just, just play this out. So the, the data center growth has server sprawl, whatever you want to call it, where you know, server sprawl, data center sprawl. People are trying to consolidate footprint, but yet they have issues, right? So take us through, what is the use case for a customer? I might not have the same data center from one facility to the other, or I might have different mix and matches. How do you guys fit into that environment? So if you look at, uh, you know, as I said, enterprise, right? You have a different type of applications solving different type of uh, 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 business, uh, problem. business yeah. problems. Yeah. So you need a, a, like a Oracle database to solve your transaction processing uh, application or, or SQL Server, again, for uh, uh, transaction process application. But if you have a, if you have a data warehouse application, there are uh, two options. One is uh, you know, traditional data management systems, like uh, enterprise data warehouses, or the emerging um, Hadoop uh, platform. Okay, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, you know, big data, you know, the way we look at big data is, another extension of your uh, enterprise application portfolio, okay? Again, in a typical enterprises, uh, you know, you will have a different type of applications. Okay, one is not going to replace the other one. So, uh, with, with the UCS, you have the ability to manage your ent entire application portfolio uh, from a single pane of glass. Right. I mean, c complexity is the bane of the data center, right? I yeah. mean, everything that our customers have asked us to do that's influenced the design of the product, is all around simplification. They don't want to be in the business of IT manual labor, putting all these parts together. They want a system that comes out of the box, ready to run apps. Um, and, and, and crucially, to, to, to Ragu's point, all the different types of apps they might need to run without standing up all these different silos of specially tuned infrastructure sure. mm -hmm. to hit each one individually. We can tune, diff, you, know, you can basically, we, we pool our resources, you can assign those out, tune a pool, you know, a set of resources through our service profiles to a particular app, but you're not spawning new management environments. So that's, that's so, really so the, another, the, the, yeah. the Another thing is like, if you look at today's uh, 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 IT system, right? Scaling your infrastructure as your application demands is very, very critical. Yeah. So that is another unique thing that uh, UCS is offering using our service profile capability. Predictability. So, yeah. what does this mean for me if I'm like, um, so we're at the Hadoop Summit, what is it? Is, I'm, what, I'm a guy who wants to build a big data environment. Sure. I got scale out, I love the message of scale out commodity servers. Um, I don't necessarily want to get locked into Cisco. Mm -hmm. I'm scared about getting locked into Cisco. Yeah. Talk to me, am, am I a candidate here? Or, or can you guys deliver if I'm like, I want to just do big data, I, you know, I have some Cisco already maybe, or all I care about is big data. Sure. Do you so, guys so if you look at that? The, yeah. The, our value proposition in the big data space, what we have done is, we have created an architecture called Cisco Big Data Common Platform Architecture. It is ba built based on the UCS fundamentals. You have UCS fabric interconnect for connectivity and embedded management using UCS manager. And you have a rack mount servers with internal storage for uh, when storing your data. And you build a cluster of, uh, of uh, a number of servers based on your application demand. Uh, you distribute the data across uh, all the servers and do you know, concurrent processing, right? I mean, that is a typical scale-out model. So, I mean, we are looking beyond uh, Hadoop, okay? And what we have done is we 
architected this solution to meet Hadoop, NoSQL distributions, and MPP databases. One common ar architecture, okay, that can meet you know, pretty much uh, all the demands of uh, like, a, like a scale out applications. So when you, you start with uh, you know, a 60 node, 32 node, whatever fits uh, your application demand today, but uniquely, we have the ability to scale as your application demands. So I can put the toe in the water if I'm not a Cisco customer. If I'm a Cisco customer, it fits easy, right into the sure. architecture. So I, there's nothing on me if I'm doing big data. I'm cool no. with it. And, and we're going to take you on the same commodity cost curve that the rest of the industry does, right? I mean, we're not using, we're using the same Intel parts, right? We're using the same types of drives, the same types of memory. It's really the way that we've constructed the larger system that's, that's, that's where we add our value. Right, you know, so. one, yeah, one thing I want to highlight here is like, if you look at, uh, you know, the UCS last four years, so we have achieved 92 world record benchmarks. 94. Uh, 94, okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, for CPU, uh, 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 application, virtualization, database, across the platforms. Yeah. It's I a mean, versatility. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. So everyone cares about third party validation. So you got that with the survey, with the IDC market share sure. tracker. What about customer traction? Can you talk about any numbers, big picture, in terms of competitive wins, um, oh, sure. use cases? So, how many? We have about so 32,000 uh, unique north, customers. Uh, I want to say we're, we're well north of 30,000. Uh, I can't remember if it's 33 or 34, but we're well, 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 well north of 30,000. Um, and really, there it's the network effect. No pun intended, right? For Cisco. Um, but <laughs> the network is the computer. Well, the, the words Scott McNeil is on the QB I mean, side. I should just call it the cloud. I mean, IT admins <laughs> are rightfully cautious creatures, right? Yeah. You don't you don't want to go do something that's going to you know gonna cost you your badge. So as more customers are seeing it play out successfully, um, you know the word's getting out, even even in a way that's better. So than whose lunch know. are you eating, and whose breakfast and lunch are you eating, and then if your dinner will be yours? We're, we're, we're an equal opportunity lunch eater, um, <laughs> but I think if you look at the share shifts, obviously, you know, in the Q1 data, um, there was a big, big down downturn for IBM. There's obviously a lot of uncertainty for those customers, but I think over time, um, it's probably HP and IBM. Um, you know, where customers are already kind of thinking about. But Dell's pretty low in this survey. Where are they in this? Well, I think Michael Dell always talks about how good his numbers are. Sure. So, uh, well, and I, and I worked at Dell for a while, so you know, I'm a little bit biased. Uh, great company, but you know, they're, they're, you know, a lot of the differentiation that they brought was adult supervision of the supply chain, um, but things that have really kind of now become table stakes. Yeah. And now the game is really around true engineering innovation, and that takes uh, the ability to invest and innovate. And Cisco has that in space. Well, that's why Michael Dell took it private. He's for like, you know, I'm done with this public offering, public scrutiny. Just take the books off the public I mean, they've market. They've got a they've got a real strong play in SMB. Yeah. Right. Marius Haas um, is great. That guy over there. They got yeah. good team of people. Yep. They they can do volume and velocity. Right. But um, they're but in large. But they're re-engineering. I mean, they're basically yeah. they're going private means we're going to go look at everything. We still got big cash flow to throw off. One but I'm percent. sure. I'm yeah. sure they're going to like, hey, you know, no more work running Wall Street. So I got to ask you on the um, uh, survey side. So, how did you do it? What is, was your success? Because you know, we were talking before we came on about how the iPhone, one of the most oh, yeah, preliminary yeah. products of, the, of, of our, of one of the well, most impressive products of, of our time. Well, I think it's a, it's a context kind of thing, right? If you think about the iPhone, it was released in 07. It took three years for that product to hit number one in the smartphone category in the U.S., right? And if you think about the dynamics of what it took to hit that number one spot, it's a bunch of individual consumers seeing the, what is you know, arguably the most iconic device of our lifetime and saying, wow, I want that, switching over, off you go. Think about the switching dynamics in a data center, right? And all the things that a customer's going to think about when they're going to decide on a new server architecture to put their mission critical apps on, and when they're also being presented with maybe a new way of operating together across their network storage you know, yeah. and server teams, if you think about the amount of consideration and thinking that goes into that decision, for the iPhone to hit number one in three years and for us to do it in kind of data center dog years in five years is nothing short of astonishing. It's pretty impressive. So, you know, um, we, think, we think the success is clearly to do that. Customers just want to plug in servers like they do routers. It's like, okay. But the thing about what you guys have done successfully with, with your other businesses is that you have such nested products that have value. So it's really hard to switch from Cisco. Well, well I think an example of the value together is, is what we do with integrated infrastructure. So um, another, this, this wasn't in this most recent server tracker data, but in IDC's last integrated uh, infrastructure tracker, um, if you look at the market for things like vBlock, FlexPod, vSpecs, integrated systems, 
all of those uh, where Cisco is the underpinning for with Nexus and UCS for the compute and network component, we represent over 42% uh, of that market, so the majority there. And, that, and that's actually before you start looking at, uh, V-Specs isn't broken out, right? So if you add V-Specs in, it gets even bigger. Um, so so V-Specs so, would be make the number bigger, so you're actually got an understated number. An understated number at 42. So, so that, and I think in, in, in many ways you could say that with our partnerships with EMC, with NetApp, we've almost created that category in many ways. And it's, and it's because of the, the, the synergy of the, of the FAB approach that we have with mm -hmm. Nexus, how that's extended into UCS and ultimately becomes a very flexible foundation for these, for these you know, private cloud initiatives to go on those integrated infrastructures. Todd Ragu, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Cisco, great to see you guys here at uh, Hadoop Summit. Um, yeah. It's a great testament to what you guys are doing, very relevant, uh, early days, and you guys got the, in the, on the ground floor. Hey, five years, you know. You know. Well, no, well, early big, days are big, big data. Early yeah. days are big right, data, not for you guys. Okay. Um, but we want to keep track of this, uh, this, this further with you guys, keep the conversation going. Um, but I'll give you the final word. Share it to folks out there. Um, what's going to go on next? What's the next big milestone? Your number one in the quarter is to be consistent every quarter. What's the big to-do item? So, uh, if, you know, Paul Perez, it, 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 he was our, he was our general manager for our server business, did an interview with CRN yesterday, and I'm paraphrasing a quote, but he basically said, I didn't spend 30 years in this industry to be number two. Um, so if that gives you any idea where the mindset is of our leadership team and, and all the folks working into this, you know, I, I think there's a, a lot to be said for the fact that once that big domino falls in the U.S. and North America, you know, we often see the technology trend move out from there. Um, so I think, I think we've got a strong outlook. Cisco's and got there'll be a lot of focus on the application side too. And Absolutely. the big data is a very yeah. strategic initiative for uh, Cisco. Drive. You will see a lot of uh, technologies coming from uh, Cisco from the compute side, network side, platform management side, specifically focusing on big data. I mean, integrated systems is what it's all about right now with software, it's sure. really awesome. Yeah. You know, the old school's coming back. I said to everyone, you know, you know, systems, networks, all the virtualization stuff all happening, you guys are great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.